I'm, I'm Carol Hemeyer, and this is my husband Vern. And Vern has lived on this uh, quarter section as long as he's been alive. He's been, spent his whole life here. And um, he is very connected to the land that we live on. And this land is about 15 miles west of Pinocchio, and uh, it was homesteaded in 1903. So we have quite a history here. We were away a few years for university, but otherwise our total life has been here. The farm is not necessarily our livelihood as such because we were teachers. So start out with we were teacher farmers and now retired teachers and farmers and I do drive truck. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it been your great grandfather who moved on to the property? Yes, uh, he came up in 1900 to look over the land and then in 1901 he came up and actually uh, homesteaded the neighboring section of land and then in 1903 bought this piece from the Hudson Bay because he needed hay and it's a bit lower land so it was good natural hay land. So he was here but didn't live on the property. This particular property was not moved on to until 1926 by my grandfather. And my dad moved here then when he was eight years old from just across the road. And then later on, I arrived on the scene and then in the centennial year, 1967, my wife also became involved with the land. Gas activity, we first sort of became aware of in 1953 because in 1953 we got the power. And when we got the power, we got a pressure system for the well rather than a hand pump. And with the pressure system in the well, then we noticed there was gas in the water, especially every morning if you turned on the tap. Well, when you're getting a glass of water, there was the gas there too. But as far as the drilling, across the road at the original homestead, they started drilling that. I believe it was in 1986, and they drilled the first well here in 1987 and the next two in 1988 and they were just vertical wells that were about a thousand meters down and then there wasn't any more oil activity here until maybe 10 years ago and then they started to drill some other wells and some were gas wells that they didn't produce because of the price of gas not making it cost effective and there's other wells that are producing and going through pipeline. The original wells were on tanks and it was hauled out by truck. And then last year they started out with the horizontal drilling and on the homestead area across the road they drilled the first two horizontal wells and now uh, one year ago they drilled our first horizontal well and below our house we have now on the same had that one of the very original well was in 1987. They've got six wells staked out, two of which they have completed and just fracking as we speak. When the oil first came in here 25 or so years ago, everybody was hoping for an oil well because well, there's big money in oil. And not unlike the rest, naturally wanted an oil well and it wasn't too bad to start with. But when we decided to build this particular house that we're living in, it happened to be just before the first well went in here. And we sat up here on the hillside with a window frame trying to decide where we were going to have the new house view so we got the best view of the valley. And so that's where we built the well, built the house at. And then the very next year they drilled the first well, which was right in the middle of the valley between the old house and the new house. And we lived through it. And when it was all finished and 
reclaimed and they had a pump jack there, it was tolerable. Now they are planning on six more wells on the same pad. And so that aspect of it doesn't fit in with what our original view was. They picked the spot that they wanted to have them. Naturally, it would have been better to have them behind the bush where we couldn't see them, but somebody would have seen them. And if we did not go along with uh, leasing to them for these six additional wells, they would have went directly across the road, which would still be in sight and sound of where we live, and drilled off the neighbor's place and still been drilling to the same final destination where they did on our land anyway. So there was no point in fighting it. And the particular drillers now compared to what was before are very good to get along with. And that includes the frack crew. We have a skylight and um, we, um, from our bedroom, we could see the old farm site as such and even though people still live there and it's still our land we could we could I could see my husband when he was working down there or what he was doing and to a point anyways and now um, that isn't the case and it's the the idea of looking across the valley and the peacefulness of it and so forth is basically gone um, right now it's quite noisy and it it won't be that way all the time I don't think but it, the idea of seeing how beautiful the valley is, the, the different seasons and stuff, um, was, all, it was always natural. And now we have these oil wells in the midst of, of the view, which is, which is slightly disturbing. It's, it's like, okay, let's sell the house and move somewhere else, but this land is Haymire land. And so if we want to stay on Haymire land, we really have to stay here and we like it here, but it's just kind of like a black spot in our view. And it's, it's, um, it's unfortunate because we just made the wrong choice where to build our house, I guess. We've also allowed the trees to grow up here in front of the house so that by hiding the oil well, we've also hid the view that we had planned on enjoying. The best part of the view is, for us anyways, or for me, is the scenery as far as different seasons, as far as different, different animals, listening to the birds sing, um, watching the sunrise in the morning. There's lots of things like that that have been lost uh, as far as uh, when the oil came on the scene. Money is not everything. There's a, the land is, is pretty special to us and um, it's kind of like, what do you do about it? There really isn't very much you can do about it except go along with progress, but we still have a sense of loss uh, because it's not just the view, it's the peacefulness of, the, of uh, the area and of the valley, which is um, marred in a sense. And with the oil wells, you get an awful lot more traffic Naturally, there's extra traffic when they're drilling and when they're fracking and when they're servicing. But once the wells are producing, then there's the guys in there daily, which is not a major problem, but it also opens it up to anybody driving around the country because it seems like the lease roads are fair game, even if they're on private property. A lot of people just look at it as a, as a source of money, but the amount of money that you get on surface rights, it's more than you might get on that three acres from farming it, but it's not necessarily worth what you're losing. Five years ago, the drill rigs and the crew are quite concerned about landowners, at least the people we've dealt with. They're worried about noise, 
lights at night, and so on, and they contact you to see if there's any problems. Similarly, when it's time to do the fracking, they have a guy that actually comes and talks to you, telling you what's going to happen and approximately when, barring weather problems. And they are also concerned if any problems are anything's bothering you, and they do their best to rectify it. And on the production end, uh, we've not had any problems in the past. It's been produced. At one time there was a noise factor, but then they went electric. So there's no problem with that with pump jacks. So we don't have anything negative to say about our recent dealings with the oil companies or the frac companies. With the whole new idea of horizontal drilling, we have no idea what the future may bring in terms of problems potentially with fracking or producing. If there's no problems at all that we've run into with, uh, we've got so far three horizontal wells drilled there's been no problem with the drilling and no problem with the fracking and one of them has been producing for a year and we've got no problems with the production of it. I think that there's a plus and minus about the oil and I think that um, we kind of got caught because we built our dream home at a time when we didn't know what was going to happen with the oil um, and of course there's there's always, you know, we don't like to stand in the way of progress, but on the same token, um, you only have one life and you can, you try and live it in a way that you'd be happy and content with it. And um, we don't blame anyone for what has happened with this, except it's sort of taken away from what we thought would be our dream home. They're not negative on the oil. We are negative on the location of these wells, but as far as the rest of the oil, that's progress.